Happy Friday, all you Minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, well, today I want to do something a little bit different. Today, I not only want to do an overview of the Superman 78 hardcover from DC Comics, but I also want to do a deep dive review because Superman is one of my favorite movies. And this brought back a lot of memories, a lot of emotions. So, join me. And welcome back, everybody. So, here we have the Superman 78 hardcover edition. Now, the very first thing I just want to go ahead and say is that this is a standard size hardcover. So, it's as big as the standard size hardcovers that are the Marvel Masterworks. But the point I'm trying to make is that the page sizes are as big as the page sizes of a trade paperback. So, not the Lux, but a standard size hardcover uh here on the cover is a little bit of a spoiler but hey that's what this deep dive review is going to be i never really do these i just wanted to do something a little bit different today uh but here we have superman 78 that classic logo from the movie we have lois lane and we have my boy lex luthor that's the way that gene hackman said it so that's the way i say it uh brainiac and then brainiac ship back there and what is that city in the background? Well, we'll get to find out here together. You'll Believe a Man Can Fly. Love this once more. That brings back a lot of memories. Just the, you'll believe a man can fly. That was the tagline for the movie. Uh, that came out in 1978. The book retails for $24.99. Now, underneath the dust jacket is what blew me away. Is this VHS copy. I love this, of Superman 78. Granted, VHSs weren't really that hot back in 1978, but they sure as hell were in the 80s, and that's the way that I got to see it. Um, and oh, before I go any further, I do want to give a huge thank you to Kenny. He's the one that pointed me in the direction of this book. Uh, in Batman 89, I haven't gotten around to reading that. I had to read this one when he told me that it was a sequel to the Superman movie, and I said, What? That's awesome. Did I talk about the spine? There's, I'm sorry if I didn't. There's the spine design. I just got too excited. But, I mean, the entire... Th this is one of the greatest designs for a collected edition. It's not too gimmicky, I don't think. Brings back a lot of memories of us that use these. And there should be a little sticker that says, Please be kind, rewind. Something like that on there. Just to add a little more nostalgia to it. The coolest thing I did find out about... This particular book right here is in the bio. So I never really show the flaps of the books. Uh, but here we have the bios of the creators. We have Robert Venditti, uh, Wilfredo Torres, Jordi Belair, and Dave Lampier. But over here under Robert Vendetti's um, bio, it states that he is currently hard at work on the next volume of the Superman 78 series. And that just made me happy. Uh, because that, that was actually pointed out uh, by a viewer of mine that asked me if I had read this yet. And I had just finished reading it. And I'm like, I'm so sad that it's over. And he was like, dude, you need to look at the flaps. And I did. So thank you so much for that, Tim. All right. Now, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show some of the artwork. And then I'll talk about where I'm speaking of spoilers in case you don't want to be spoiled. I don't want to ruin the experience for anybody. But I feel like I, I need to talk about it, too. So, let's get this opened. Alright, cracking the video cassette open. Here's what your end paper looks like. It's just those clear blue skies that you are hoping to see Superman just fly out of. And sure enough, there is the title, which is the very glimmering title that we get in the original Richard Donner film. And lo and behold, there is Superman here. Are all the credits right here. Uh, the book retails for $24.99, and it has 152 pages, uh, collecting the first six issues, now that we know there's going to be a follow-up, of Superman 78. And we have a cover before the chapters begin, so there's six chapters in here. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about the paper quality and build so I can get into the spoiler section here in a little bit. Uh, but it is this matte paper is what they're using for this. It's not glossy paper, it's just this matte paper. And we start off with 21.7 light years from Earth. Long ago, 
with the destruction of the planet Krypton. So we see and relive the first opening act of Superman where Jor-El sends his son into the unknown. And very similar to uh, what happened in the... I don't know why I all I think about the Bardock saga in Dragon Ball Z. Because there are a lot of similarities between Goku and Kal-El. But I thought of Freezer just looking at the planet blowing up, even though he's the one that caused the planet to blow up. But in this case, it is Brainiac checking out the planet of Krypton. Now, this is a character that never appeared in the movies. He's just a character from the comic books. One of the hardest things, I will say, for an artist to do is to draw these characters like their actor counterparts. You know, you're not drawing Superman. Um, you know, because everybody just draws Superman their own way. You have Kurt Swan, uh, you have George Paytas, you have John Byrne, you have Adam Kubert. They all have their own Superman way of drawing him. In here, you have to make the characters look like they're actors because you have to make this more of a believable world, not just in dialogue and plot or the setting, but also in the way that they look. So here, you know, you're not looking at Clark Kent or Lois Lane, you're really looking at Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder. And I think Wilfredo Torres does an amazing job of that uh, from time to time. Like, even the mannerisms of Clark Kent when Christopher Reeve played Clark Kent. And of course, they are not the only characters that show up in here. You actually have Mark McClure right there, who is Jimmy Olsen. Uh, you have Jackie Cooper right here, who is Perry White. It's just really cool to relive those moments. So... We do have an attack by Brainiac, and I'm just showing some of the ac action sequences, and then I'll talk about the plot here. We have an iconic scene right here that we don't need to follow panel by panel. We know what's going to happen. We've seen the movies, and even if you haven't seen the movies, you know that he's about to rip that shirt open and reveal the Superman shield and go into action. And you can almost hear the John Williams score. I, I love that movie so much, so in my head... I picture Christopher Reeve's voice when I'm reading his dialogue. I'm picturing Margot uh, Kidder's voice when reading her dialogue. So it's really cool to see this particular book. Because we've seen follow-ups or, how do I put this, uh, almost shoehorned stories in the past. You know, with like things like, um, what was it called, X-Men... Um, for, not X-Men Forever. It was the Chris Claremont series that, what if he had never stopped re uh, writing X-Men... And he went in there and wrote X-Men stories as if he had never stopped writing them. This is a sequel to the Superman movie, to the first one. And being called Superman 78, this takes place before Superman 1 and Superman 2. It doesn't matter which cut you're looking at. It takes place bet between Richard Donner, Superman 1, and Superman 2. So it's this attack by Brainiac. This is what the action sequences look like. And it's just so awesome to read the dialogue here because we're talking about late 70s early 80s even the settings bring it back giving me this nostalgia feeling uh now the other thing i'm going to do right now and then we'll talk about the spoiler stuff is show off some of the extras but kind of get the idea of what the art looks like here i'll show a couple of more scenes including this one right here using classic powers from the movies oh that's so awesome and just wanted to showcase the fight between Superman and the Brainiac robot back here. And then we'll look at the extras. And the extras are mainly just sketches and... And here are said sketches of the characters that are going to be in this particular comic. Including Lex Luthor right there. And the covers right there. And these are variant covers. And they tell you who the artist is. This one's. This is a very beautiful cover here by Lee Weeks. And Jamal Campbell. That was an awesome cover right there. And then a tribute to the man that made the movie happen. So without the movie, this couldn't be. Me, of course, without Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Couldn't have Superman to begin with. But this is a follow-up to the movie. The first movie. The Binding of the Book. It is glued binding right there. So, I mean, it does its job where it lays over towards the front. You have to hold it down a little bit uh, if you want to see the entire picture and then towards the back of the book. It'll want to close on you because of just the built of it. Now, 
from this moment forward, I do want to talk about this book in depth. So if you don't want to know anything else about this, what the plot is, other than the fact that you have Brainiac, couldn't help that, that was on the freaking cover. Uh, but if you don't want to know anything else, bounce now. All right, I'll put it in the description of the video. Okay, so I absolutely love reading this. Read it cover to cover as soon as I got it. Uh, just because Superman means so much to me. The movie... Oh my god, has some of my favorite lines. You know, all these powers, I couldn't even save him. That tears me up every time I think about that line. Uh, Christopher Reeve, just this role of playing Superman, this and Clark Kent, this bumbling idiot that Lois Lane kind of falls in love with, just brought back a lot of memories. And the entire John Williams soundtrack is playing through my head as I'm reading this. But the storyline is really interesting. So you, we have this attack on Brainiac that I showed a little bit earlier. We have the classic look to Brainiac, even though it's just one of his drones that he's sending out. The real Brainiac is hiding in a ship. Then he makes a big, like, deal with Superman. He's like, look, you know, this world, you don't belong here. You, you are offsetting the balance of this particular world. And Superman makes a deal with him. He surrenders to Brainiac saying, okay, if you promise to leave this world alone... I will go with you. And everybody is shocked that Superman surrenders. And I thought that was really cool. <laughs> Lex Luthor's role in this is awesome. Like He has a team up with Superman on how to take down Brainiac at first. But Superman surrendering to Brainiac was a really surprising scene. But if, if you're reading Superman comics, right? If you've been watching the movies, you know that he's not above surrendering just for the better of mankind when he surrenders he goes to brainiac's ship and in brainiac's ship is where he encounters many little bottled cities including thanagar or thanagarians flying around so there's little cameos here but the big one of course being the city of kandor so this is the bottled city of kandor you've read about it in the comics since i believe the silver age but in the movies, this is so cool because he is reunited with his father and mother. You know, he had his adopted Ma and Pa Kent here on Earth. But here he is reunited with Kal-El and his mother. So I thought that was really cool. Especially the way that Wilfredo has to draw them. I mean, this is Brando that we're talking about here. And then this is, I cannot remember. I think it's Susanna York, if I'm not mistaken, uh, playing Lara. Or playing, but being the role of Lara that is now drawn. And Superman has to put up his costume. He is reunited with his people. He tells his, you know, his real biological mother and father about his life on Earth and what he experienced. And then we even get a little bit of a flashback to Brainiac and the way he thinks, why he wants to pretty much just minimize these cities and keep them as, not trophies, but almost like, a way to preserve these particular beings uh, because their worlds have been destroyed. So the cool part is that Luthor figures out a way to communicate with Superman because everybody's like, Superman left, he's gone, including Lois Lane, who is madly in love with him. And Luthor's like, look, before he left, I said goodbye, but I put a little tracker on him. This is comic book science, movie science, <laughs> maybe science science, I don't know. Uh, but Lois is able to communicate with... Superman almost called him Clark, but Kal-El. She's like, you change your hair, you change your outfit, why did you leave? And he tells her about being reunited. He also tells her not to trust Luthor. Now, this sets off an alarm in Brainiac's ship, and Brainiac's, like, drones are like, hey, there's somebody else down on Earth that could unbalance that level that he's looking for. He thinks that they're primitive people, but then there are people down there like Lex Luthor. So he immediately goes to Earth and... This is a really cool scene where this guy's just walking his dog and then Metropolis is just floating. So he's going to put Metropolis in a bottle. Now Superman has to figure out a way to get out of the bo bottle of Kandor right now, the city of Kandor. So with his dad's help, it's a really cool team up. There are a lot of freaking cameos, by the way, of like 70s shows, of 80s shows. I'll show you one of my favorites. Um, it was another movie directed by Richard Donner. But... Superman is able to get out of the bottle with his father's help. I love that he teamed up with Jor-El to get out of this bottle, knowing that they may never see him again. And he gets out and decides to confront Brainiac. Because not only is he threatening 
Metropolis, he broke his word. He said he would leave Metropolis alone if Superman surrendered. So now it's some butt whooping time. So of course Brainiac gets inside of his robot. I showed this a little bit earlier. There's this huge fight. There's one thing in here that I don't think would have fit. Yeah, right here. Would have fit in a Richard Donner film or a Superman film just because I thought it was really dark. But that's when Superman's begging him to get out of the suit. There's still time to save himself. But Brainiac is stubborn. And we see his dead corpse. And I thought, whoa. I don't know. Maybe it's because I kept reading this as a movie that I was taken back by that particular panel. You know, I'm all about gore and violence. But maybe it just took me out of the story uh, for a second. But, I mean, it's not the death of Brainiac. The whole time it's been hinted that he's making a clone of himself to put his... Uh, memories in and sure enough he's there and he takes off leaving superman with all these bottles oh this scene is so awesome this is like something that i think brian singer did whenever superman was um in that superman returns movie like lifting an entire city yeah this was so cool metropolis has fallen because well brainiac's ship is gone so of course superman catches it i thought it was awesome and that is my favorite cameo the Goonies, Mouth and Data, Chunk, oh man, and Mikey. That, that's so awesome. And there's lots of cameos in here like that if you pay attention to the panels. But yeah, Superman and Lois are reunited. And even the ending is so freaking sweet. I, I, like seriously, it almost brought a tear to my eye. Maybe it did, I don't know. And it's just Superman going back to his Fortress of Solitude now that he has all the bottles that he could save from the ship, including... The bottle of the city of Kandor and you know telling his mom and dad that he promises them he's gonna figure out a way to get them out and oh, man Lara just says you know you've given us something that we've missed and that's hope love that and of course what is a Superman movie without him flying out in the space and looking at the camera my gosh I love this freaking book I the the <laughs> I was just taken back by it. I was, I guess, I don't know. I was, I, I've been in a rough spot in my head for a, about a week or two. So it was nice to be reminded of the simpler times. And I know the simple times is different for everybody. You know, some people look at the Silver Age for simpler times, the Bronze Age, uh, the, the, the 80s, the 90s. Everybody's time or simpler times are different. My simpler times were going with my dad to the movie theaters and just being in awe. How, how, how is Superman holding up that helicopter? How is it possible that they really hired... Like, I was a kid, you know, when he took me... Because they were re-showing that with Superman 2. I think in Peru, we got it in, like, 1981 or 1982 in the theaters. But, you know, I was asking him this question. I'm sure my dad looked at me like, just be quiet and watch a movie. Kind of like the way I looked at my kids whenever they were, like, five or six years old, asking me a thousand questions. Uh, but it brought back those memories. And, yeah, I've missed that. And I needed that. And I needed this read. Thank God for comics. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this hardcover. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read this, if what you thought of the original Richard Donner film, Superman, that came out in 1978. Uh, if you had one problem with this, like I did, it should have been oversized hardcover format, uh, just because it deserves that kind of treatment. Who knows, maybe they'll collect this and Batman 89 together in a deluxe hardcover edition. But there is a follow-up to this, so that's the other good news. Everyone, please stay healthy and safe out there. Enjoy your weekend. If you're at Comic-Con, have a blast. Uh, think of me if you're out there, you know, going to panels and just being around people. <laughs> anyway, everyone stay healthy and safe. Much love.